providing resiliency skills to prevent stigma and social isolation since January 2021. Our mission remains to spread the message that nothing measures potential. Hi, my name is Alyssa Kaplan, licensed clinical social worker and founder of the Together We Launch program. I am so excited today because we are having a very special guest speaker. Her name is Jennifer Lincoln. She is a licensed clinical social worker. She has an excellent sense of humor. She ha loves to read books. She has lots of friends and uh, a very strong network in her family. And she also has um, cerebral palsy. And she has a kind of cerebral palsy that does not affect her cognitive thinking or uh, her learning, but oftentimes people are, un are not even aware that cerebral palsy can not have that. And in addition, she is married to her husband uh, almost 11 years now, and he has, um, he is on the spectrum and they have a very strong marriage. And we're going to hear about, about her growing up, about her perspective regarding uh, experiences related to stigma, social isolation, and her life today, and her advice and input and recommendations and takeaways for parents who have young children who are just finding out maybe that their child might have some developmental challenges. Hi, Jennifer, how are you? I'm great, Alyssa. Thank you for having me. Thank you. So um, there's so many things that I'd like you to speak to us about. And I'm thinking that let's start with early on in your life. I know you happened to go to Easter Seals or get some services from Easter Seals when you were young. And I'd like you to maybe let's start start there about what you recall when you were young and you were about three years old, I think. Yes, goodness. Um, so I spent my early growing up in San Francisco and I got physical and occupational therapy services through Easter Seals when I was young. I was diagnosed with cerebral palsy at age three. And I believe I started going to Easter Seals um, almost immediately. And some of my very early memories were going to physical therapy and occupational therapy there and you just have have great memories of the program there well i'm so happy to hear that i happen to uh, work as a school so social worker currently at an easter seals and i'm very proud of the services that they offer and the people that i work with do you, so you have some fond memories there and what's interesting is not get what what now people can get something called early intervention which is services from zero to three so you were you did not get that and they didn't they didn't know you had cerebral palsy when you were born no um like i said i was not diagnosed until about age three i believe i would need to check on the exact age but i i think it was around three three years old yes so how did how did it even do you know how it came about your mom ever share with you how and what she felt well uh, let me also state that i am 43 years old now so this is also we're going back about 40 years so we didn't have the diagnostic screening tools that we have today we didn't know then what we know today so i was meeting cognitive milestones on time and in some cases early. Um, I was I actually started speaking early, but I was not, not reaching physical milestones on time. I was meeting those late things like um, rolling over, sitting up, standing. I was late meeting those developmental milestones. So they, um, because I was late meeting those milestones, it took more time to act, actually diagnose me with cerebral palsy. Wow. So growing up, um, you went to general education classes, right? Yes, I was in mainstream school. And you had, there was never an, an individual educational plan. Is that correct? <sighs> That's correct, because um, individual ed education plans actually came about as part of legislation called 
the Individuals with Disabilities in Education Act, or IDEA, which came about in the mid 90s, I yeah. want to say 94. And by 1994, I was a junior in high school. So all growing up, you did not get any school support services other than on the side, the physical therapy and OT? I had speech therapy in elementary school, but um, nothing that would be put in place the way that we have today with individual education plans. Yeah, it's very exciting. I don't know if you're you're aware of what goes on now that we have we're better at diagnosing a little bit. We're better Oh at, absolutely yes. Yes. How do you think that will impact the kids of today going into their future that they're gonna have maybe years of services that you didn't have? Well it, it it's definitely exciting that we have better support support services. The other thing that's really exciting in terms of breaking social stigma is that we have a lot more kids with disabilities in mainstream class classrooms than we had say in my generation and certainly the generation before me and what that means is that um mainstream kids without disabilities are being educated alongside their peers with disabilities. And so it's it's normal to them. Yeah. It's just normal. That's just their classmate, their peer, their friend. The exposure. And You're saying it, that they're exposed to people that have disabilities, so they're more understanding. Is that what you're exactly. saying? Exactly. Exactly. And, and it, it's going to be really exciting to see what happens as this, this generation is now coming into their, their college years. And, you know, it's just another human being in their, in their classroom. And then it's just going to be another human being in their college, in their workplace, in society. And I'm, I'm really excited to see what that what that does in in terms of social stigma um, and the improvements for people with disabilities. Oh, good. So you see that we're moving. We seem to be moving in the right direction by having okay. more inclusion, less division and segregation. So when you were growing up, can you tell us about uh, some experiences that you felt with you felt so stigmatized and ways of overcoming that or how you manage that? Well, there was certainly, you know, I know that kids, kids can be cruel and there was a lot of teasing growing up, a lot of, just a lot of teasing when I was a kid. Um, I attribute a lot of my success in life and self-confidence to my mom. Um, she's she was and is just incredible I remember right around um eighth grade was when all the girls in my grade were really getting into um taking da dance classes at the local dance studio and I was kind of going well I I don't know if I can do this with the CP and she just said well why not wait why can't you why can't you go dance she said look honey here's how it is Allison dances like Allison Hillary dances like Hillary Corey dances like Corey and Jen you dance like Jen you get your little butt out on the dance floor and dance if that's what you yeah. want to want to do and you get to decide if you like to dance nobody gets to decide that for you and that was in the eighth grade and I'm 43 years old and I'm still dancing. So, so cool. So your mom's yeah. attitude really had a big impact. Oh, definitely. Definitely. And and she and she's still my biggest fan and my biggest cheerleader. And you know, and I still think that and I, I know I just if there's something I want to do, I'm just gonna do my darndest to go out there and get it done. 
and then do it the way that I do it. And yeah, I may have to make some accommodations and changes to do it the way that I need to get it done. But I think everyone does. That's true. Was there ever a time when you or your mom that you knew of um, where there was fear? Well, for my mom, she would say that's just part of being a parent and um, you never want to see your child hurting. And I know that the the teasing and some of the bullying I went through in school was really hard on her. Um, and and same same for me. Um, I've certainly taken a lot of risks in life. Um, for me, it's worth it because you learn, you know, it's, it's always just kind of, you know, if something doesn't turn out the way that I, I think it should, or, you know, I intended it to, it's not failure, it's a learning experience. What did I get out of that? What, how can I modify that? And the, the times in my life that I thought, you know, okay, this is the end. My life is over. This is just the worst thing that could ever happen. Those are the experiences that actually, looking back, were the catalysts that that propelled me into the best parts of my life. And where I am right now, I'm actually the happiest and most successful I've ever been. And it's because of some of the darkest moments i think that applies to everyone to be honest i think that's that if that attitude um, that you took can be useful to everyone and i hope that the parents sometimes if they have kids that have special challenges that they mm -hmm. that they realize that some of the things that go on while like you said in eighth grade you felt a huge amount of stigma and it was super mm -hmm. painful that maybe to a lesser extent, but that feeling is common in that, you know, yeah. middle school, high school, it's a really challenging time. So for parents to be, to do something, if they're think back, you know, when their child does get that age, if they think back mm -hmm. to the podcast, to remember that their attitude as parents towards their children, how they tell their children what to say. If your mom would have said, you know what, you can't dance because the other kids are gonna make fun of you would have had a, a totally different impact. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. Parents um, that is important. Yeah. Yeah. Um, focus on what your child can do. You know, I, I have a friend with a, uh, actually her daughter is a young adult now. We met when her daughter was a teenager and she said, yeah, my daughter has to use a wheelchair 24-7 so she literally does, does dance from her wheelchair and she does partner dancing with her twin brother. They are adorable, but they do partner dancing and Hannah uses her wheelchair with, you know, with her, her brother like wheels her around. They are phenomenal. And it's just like, yeah. And I, I, I told my friend about my mom, you know, my mom's saying, well, Jen, you're going to dance like Jen. And my friend said, yep, Hannah dances like Hannah. Um, but yeah, just focus, focus on what, what you or your kid, you know, focus on what, what they're good. able. What to they're do. able to do, what they're good yeah. at. And also what you sent, see, feel, what I feel from you, Jennifer, is um, yeah. you, you bring out the fact that life is supposed to be not only achieving new things and experimenting new things and growing all the time, but also fun. Please have fun. Life, life really should be fun. You know, some pa sometimes parents, they're, they're very stressed out and their child maybe has some challenges. And if you could talk to them, is that one of your messages? Like if you could reach up as, you know, when you were a young child, like telling these parents, you know what, sometimes <clears throat> just have fun with me. Absolutely. Absolutely. I mean, just have fun and find out what your kid thinks is fun because just because the occupational therapist says, oh, spend X number of hours on this 
doesn't mean that it's what your kid wants to do for fun. What they wouldn't do? What's fun for them? Yeah. Let, let, let them be kids. Let them be them, themselves. Let them be the creative, resourceful, whole people that they're going to be. Did anybody, you're so good at expressing your feelings and um, sharing with us, like, did anybody, I know your mom helped you a lot and I know you had a supportive family and I sounds mm -hmm. like you have a very strong spirit. When I'm um, having worked in this field for a, a long time, there's something that I do tell parents and I, I'll share it in this podcast that I think it's really important and I've seen it, the impact of it. And that is the, the power of language. And it's very, to me, I've seen this and I know mm -hmm. when I, it's not, um, you know, a, 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 uh, let's see, an autistic child. It's not a cerebral palsy. That that's not what we lead with. We lead with this is the individual. This is the person. This is Jennifer. Mm -hmm. Also has, you know, the, all these skills exactly. and this disability. And that's so important because it does, in my opinion, from what I've seen, and you can speak on this, it does seem to define or to have a role in how other people interpret and interact with that person. If I introduce you as, as the person with the, the disability, they, they see that first, where if I first introduce you as the person, they see the person first. And it's Absolutely, yes, it, it matters. It, it definitely matters. What, any, any other thoughts that you have? That None so much but my my other advice is um it's not easy and parents shouldn't be afraid to um seek out help when they need it because it's not easy and there's incredible organizations like easter sales you know cerebral palsy um you know it, it, there's there's organizations there's um individual therapists there are there are helpers you're and not you're not alone you don't have to do it alone and there are people like you like me who care so deeply and really want to be there to help thank you so much jennifer um i appreciate it